it turns into factions, right? You have the people inside the system who are the brilliant scientists. You have the crackpots outside the system as if those are the only yeah. two options. Yeah, I, I think that's right. I mean, we haven't emphasized this uh, part of the conversation as much because I, you know, part of what I, my role in the scientific community here is that I've been talking a lot about the, the problems and the flaws. Mm -hmm. And I've been emphasizing those things because I think that they're not talked about enough. But we could equally have spent an hour talking about the problems with pseudoscience, with mm -hmm. crackpots, with people raising harmful theories that they don't have sufficient support for, mm -hmm. uh, for people, you know, not sufficiently trusting uh, scientific uh, evidence that is indeed well substantiated. Um, so that's the other side of this coin, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. It's just that, like you've just said, it, people use these proxies. You know, if somebody has a lot of letters after their name, people get excited about that and they say, well, that person must be, must be you know, properly uh, accredited and know what they're talking about. Right. And, and for the most part, that is a reliable proxy. If you have spent years educating yourself at the top universities, it's, it's very likely that you know more about what you're talking about if it's within your area of expertise than other people. That's generally a reliable proxy. But of course, sometimes people have letters after the names and they get things wrong. Mm -hmm. And we have to be open to that possibility. Similarly, you know, generally speaking, if you're just kind of fishing around the internet and trying to come up with some theory, you know, confirmation bias is a huge force uh, in, in our lives. It's easy to, to click around on the internet. And if I'm sort of inclined toward conspiracy theories or something like this, and I say, well, the man is out to get me and, you know, I can't trust authorities, you can, you can find, you know, um, illegitimate support for that view with a few clicks on the internet mm -hmm. very easily. And, mm -hmm. and, and that shouldn't be given uh, any credence at all. So, um, you know, uh, p p we, we all should be trying to counteract our own biases. We all should be trying to adopt a skeptical stance, not just toward the man or, uh, you know, those skeptics over there, but toward our own ideas. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, you should, we should be skeptical of our own skepticism. If we find that we're just, you know, throwing stones at everybody else's theory, but we're not constructively offering our own point of view, mm -hmm. or if we're, you know, not charitably construing what the other person's trying to get at and we're just trying to tear them down, uh, that's, that's misguided as well. Mm -hmm. and, and so, like I said, there's no shortcut or easy heuristic here. People have to try to, to, to keep their biases in check. They have to learn about what sorts of biases we all have and figure out strategies. You know, there are various rationalist movements and things that go around meetup groups where people try to, you know, identify biases and counteract them and so on. Um, but uh, but we should we should be aware when we're using a proxy for something. When we're mm -hmm. using, you know, um, a, a, a degree as a proxy for truth, we just have to recognize it's a proxy. It's maybe a good heuristic, but it's not infallible. Similarly, mm -hmm. somebody who's not educated in a proper way, that doesn't mean they're wrong, but they're, they're more likely to be wrong than mm -hmm. someone who spent 10 years you know, acquiring the proper tools to know how to evaluate the literature. And, mm -hmm. you know, and so we have to treat it for what it is, which is a heuristic that often fails.